Hello and welcome. In the last clip, we talked about unary relationships, uh, a different kind of relationship where we were dealing with a single entity engaged in a relationship with itself. And that's relatively common and quite useful. Uh, in this clip, we want to talk about a different departure from a binary relationship, which is a degree higher than two instead of a degree lower. And that is called a ternary relationship. Ternary meaning a degree of third. And so we have three entities participating in this relationship. And ternary relationships are a, the least complicated specific example of nary. Uh, while it gets complicated and very difficult to understand, we can have relationships where four entities or five entities or six entities or however many entities we happen to have participating simultaneously, although keeping track of exactly what's going on in relationships higher than three, higher than ternary, uh, is a little bit tricky. As a matter of fact, ternary relationships can be a little bit tricky, but I think with a little time and effort, you can get a grasp of what's going on with them. So I think the best thing to do is to go right into a concrete example. So here's our concrete example. So we are a we are a car manufacturer. Pick your favorite. We'll say Ford. They're doing relatively well for themselves. And we have cars that we produce. We could say vehicles, but we'll limit it to cars. They have parts that uh, go into the, their manufacture. And let's limit our consideration to the parts that we do not manufacture ourselves. Uh, car manufacturers buy a lot of their components. Okay, so we've got cars that are built from parts. We've got parts coming from supplier. Although really, I just viol violated one of my rules, which is keep all of your entity names singular because singular entity names keep assigning cardinalities a little bit more straightforward. Okay, so the thing with the ternary relationship is there are three entities participating simultaneously in a relationship with one another. So because of that fact, when we're considering cardinality, we need to consider it within the context of two parts simultaneously relative to the third. So let's take a look at what that might mean. So let's say for a given instance of a supplier and a given instance of a part, can that supplier supply that part for at most one car or can they supply it for multiple cars? So say for example, we've got a steering wheel. I don't know, what does the steering wheel look like? Um, that, that's the worst drawing of a steering wheel I've ever seen. Pretend that didn't happen. Imagine in your mind a steering wheel. We've got a steering wheel. It's supplied to us by multiple suppliers. We've got, you know, steering wheel part ST1 is supplied to us by Acme Steering Wheel Company, Steer Co., and, and other companies. But what we need to do is consider the given part supplied by a given supplier. Is there ever an instance where that supplier's steering wheel or any other part goes into multiple cars? If so, then the cardinality for car is going to be many. Okay, And if not, it can stay one. Let's say that in our case, we can show an example, the steering wheel, steering wheel ST1, supplied by Acme Steering. That goes into the Ford um, the Mustang and the whatever escape uh, so this is then many okay and then you have to do this round robin for every combination okay let's say for a given instance of a car and that car's specific part is there an example of this pairing where that car's particular part comes from multiple suppliers you know, is it the case that the steering wheel for the Mustang, we can obtain that from Acme Steering Wheel as well as Steer Co. If that's the case, then this cardinality is also multiple. It may be the case, it may be not. You know, it's a, it's a question of the you know, business rule of the organization, really. 
And so there's that pairwise. And then finally, the third pairwise is, okay, for a given instance of a supplier supplying a specific car, does that supplier supply multiple parts for a car? Can we think of an example? Let's say, you know, um, Argus Parts are Us, providing parts for the Mustang. They provide both the steering wheel and the floor mats. Okay. If this were true, if we could point to an, a specific example like this, then we would say the cardinality for part relative to supplier and car is also many. And if there's no such example, in no case is this, is this true, then this cardinality would be one. But in all likelihood, we're going to say, yes, indeed, that does happen, and so this is also many. And you may wonder why the, the M and the N and the P, really, we typically use N to represent a indeterminate, unspecified number greater than one. But if we said that the cardinality was n to n to n, that tends to imply that these values are all exactly the same because it's the same variable if you go back to your algebra days. And that is certainly not necessarily the case. So to avoid the potential for confusion, we pick different variable names, traditionally m and n, and in the case of ternary variables, p. Okay. So. There's an example of interpreting cardinality for a ternary relationship. And you may be asking yourself, and I hope you are, because if you are, you're paying attention. Uh, that's great, but what about participation? Interpreting participation in a ternary relationship is a bear. And I don't think we necessarily need to spend any time on it. It will not be on the test, as they say. but we can show a brief example. You know, is it the case that a car, every car, must participate in the having a part supplied to it by a particular supplier? You know, if it's true, then you double this line, and if it's not, then you leave it singular. Whoops, you don't want to lose the entity outright though. But realistically, we do, we do not need to worry about that at all. The other question is, you know, we place a lot of emphasis on meaningful names, not only for entities, but also for relationships. That is extremely difficult in most cases in ternary relationships. Often what you do is say um, something like supplier, car, part, or SCP as the name of this relationship to indicate the entities that are participating in it. So that's a perfectly fine convention. In, in this instance, we might actually be able to come up with a um, a meaningful name, you know, but really, because there's three different directions, you know, you could say supplies, but then, you know, a, a, a given car is supplied a part by, you know, that works. But really, the convention typically would be just SCP or something along those lines. And even though this is getting a little ahead of ourselves in that it talks about translation, uh, note that in the case of ternary relationships, the relationship itself will get its own table. And that relationship table will contain the primary keys of each of the three participating entities. So it would contain the part number and the car number and the supplier number. Okay? So there's your exposure to modeling a ternary relationship. I hope that's helpful. I know it's a little bit confusing. It's a little bit abstract, but these are common relationships in bio, biosciences and uh, medicine and any sort of research having to do with biology. There are lots of n-ary relationships. In business, they're not terribly com un uncommon. In 
even in the problem of scheduling. I've often seen student examples uh, in their uh, projects. Um, not here, Pierce. This is the first the first year that we're teaching this course at Pierce. But uh, when I was at Drexel, students would want to model a database that allowed for class scheduling. And uh, typically, class scheduling is winds up being a ternary relationship because you've got a given instance of a teacher a given instance of a set of students, a given class at a given time. So that there's, there's no easy way to model that with a set of binary relationships. It's either ternary or even higher nary. So, I mean, these things do come up. As a matter of fact, just last session, when I was teaching this course at Pierce on campus, a group of students were doing a help desk ticketing system, and they wound up needing to have a ternary relationship to model the constraints as they had set them up. And I think they learned a lot by doing so, and uh, it was necessary, and they identified it as such, and uh, I was impressed it was cool, and they got a good grade. So uh, hooray for everyone. Thanks for listening, study hard, and I will see you online.